Hey, welcome to EMS Office Hours. This is Jim Hoffman, and this is your Monday Minutes. Guys, today, we're going to keep on going here with more Monday Minutes and talking about diabetic emergencies, and this is actually part two, and we're going to focus on hypoglycemia, which is a common sort of call type we get in EMS, right? Um... Before we get going, guys, I would like to try to mention why this stuff is important. You know, it's not just for exams. I've said this before. It's really to help build your knowledge base. Sure, there's key information here that's going to help you pass your exams, refresh your memory on things, right? But it's really designed to build your knowledge base, to encourage you to research further, to learn more, to uh, engage in these topics, okay? That's going to help you make better clinical decisions, write better reports and interact more effect- effectively with other healthcare providers, even if that's just your partner and co-workers. So again, guys, talking about hypoglycemia, okay, this is something that occurs as a result of an imbalance in the amounts of insulin and glucose, most commonly caused by a patient, you know, taking insulin and then are not eating enough food, right? And some of the causes are things like the medications they're on, if they exercise too much, if they're drinking alcohol, of course, like I just mentioned, poor diet, right, not eating enough or not eating the right foods. Uh, Patients that can be hypothermic can also have hypoglycemia as well. And liver disease can also trigger this as well too, right? So just some things that you have to kind of uh, keep in mind, right? Now, when we talk about assessment, Okay, for the hypoglycemic patient, um, you know, it, it develops rapidly, okay, over a few minutes up to a few hours, all right, and there are things going on in the hormones that get secreted, okay, and these are causing some of these early warning signs you see here, right, things like shakiness, weakness, patient gets a little diaphoretic, They'll have rapid pulse or rapid respirations. So these are kind of early warning signs before they start getting to that next stage where they sort of that advanced hypoglycemia, right, more severe, where you get that older level of consciousness even when they become totally unresponsive, right? Things that can mimic CVAs, neurological deficits, slurred speech, all right? Again, we mentioned patients can have a rapid pulse. They got respiratory issues, all right, with rapid uh, respiratory rates. They can have seizures. Don't forget, like I said, that diaphoresis is going to be getting more and more and more, right? It can get much more diaphoretic as the hypoglycemia, you know, advances, okay? Um, so just some things that you really have to kind of, uh, you know, focus in on here, okay? Um, you know, I want to kind of just end some of the care you want to give, right? It's kind of basic. We all know what this stuff is. Your airway, your oxygen, your EKGs, right? Um, and you can give oral glucose, right? Or maybe even uh, uh, orange juice with some couple of packs of sugar in it, okay? Um, of course, you got to follow your local guidelines. Patient has to be able to maintain their airway, be able to follow your directions to go ahead and take the oral glucose or drink the orange juice or the candy, whatever the case may be, right? Monitor their blood glucose levels. See if what you're doing is increasing their uh, sugar levels as you treat them, okay? Uh, so every few minutes, if you, you can go ahead go back and check it again. Is the sugar coming up? Is the oral glucose or the orange juice they're drinking actively taking effect? How is the mentation going? Is it improving? Is it getting worse, right? Um, so some things you have to kind of think with that, right? Um, some other things you can do as well, of course, you want to start the IV. Get a blood sample if it's required by your uh, your protocols, right? Um, things like D50, D25, D10, Right, dextrose, the ten percent dextrose is becoming the standard treatment for diabetic patients. Right, D fifty is really, really, really getting out of favor in most areas and most guidelines. Okay, so keep that in mind. Right, so D ten is more of what uh, you end up giving nowadays. You're running a hundred milliliters usually of D ten through the IV. Okay, of course, don't forget, you're going to follow your guidelines. This is what I, my experience is and what is the, the kind of the basic uh, treatments and basic care 
right? But follow your local guidelines, okay, when it comes to this type of stuff. And of course, you know, when you get done with these patients, a lot of times when they come to, their blood glucose has gone up, uh, they're alert and, you know, oriented times four, um, a lot of them will want to refuse transport, okay? And most of our guidelines out there will allow the patients to do that, right? But, of course, you have to explain to them the risk of that refusal. You have to make them understand that they have to continue to eat something more substantial, right? Because you don't want that sugar dropping again. Then you end up going right back out to where you were and having the same situation, right? So you have to kind of explain that to them and the risk of their refusal and what they need to be doing to ensure that their sugar doesn't drop again, okay? Again, guys, follow your local guidelines, okay? Uh, we don't want to encourage people to refuse transport. We want to get them to go. But most of these patients are aware of their situation. They're aware of their disease. And they understand that going to the hospital oftentimes won't really make a difference unless they have something going on. Like I mentioned earlier with the causes where they've got something happening with their medications or that they're maybe they're drinking too much alcohol, things like that, okay? Usually you want people to... They're going to refuse just because they didn't eat enough, and that's the primary reason why their sugar dropped, okay? If there's something else going on why the sugar might have dropped, you're going to want to get and encourage them to go ahead and get to the hospital and get a full evaluation. One last note, guys, on this stuff, okay? Sometimes you get hypoglycemic patients, and one of their signs will be uh, hypotension, right? But this is not a sign of hypoglycemia, so keep assessing the patient Look for other causes. What else is going on that can make them hypotensive, right? The hypoglycemia might be a result of something else causing the hypotension or the hypotension might be something going on and then the hypoglycemia followed, right? So keep keep that in mind, okay, that something else might be happening and look for other causes if they're hypotensive along with all the other diabetic signs and symptoms that you might be seeing. Guys, that is it for this episode. Real quick, short and sweet. I like focusing on key elements like this, uh, really kind of bringing stuff home. Hopefully, if you um, have any uh, questions or it's not ringing true to you, you'll go ahead and uh, research it a little bit more. Of course, guys, I encourage you to join me, engage with me on social media. Um, you can get me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at EMS Safe on both of those channels, or you can hook me up on Facebook, and it's facebook.com forward slash the EMS Professionals. I hope you go ahead and join me on any of those social media channels, whichever one is your favorite. Uh, guys, uh, for watching today, I do have a quick little offer here for you. You can get a trial membership to TurboMedic On Demand. There's going to be a link in the notes. To go ahead and check that out, the trial membership, seven day trial membership. Um, you know, TerraMedic guys can really help do things like I mentioned in every episode here of the Monday Minutes, and that is to build your knowledge base, right? Give you key information to help you pass exams and succeed as an EMS professional, and that may help you make better clinical decisions, right? And TerraMedic has just what you need to do that, guys. There's gigabytes of digital content that you can either download or view right on your computer or right on your tablet, okay? Um, there's hours of audio and video on multitude of topics to help you increase that knowledge base, to help you pass your exams. And speaking of exams, there are a bunch of practice exams inside TerraMedic as well, including the NRE SIM software there, right? It's web-based software that's designed to sort of mimic the National Registry exam, okay? In addition to the actual multiple choice questions and exams that are TerraMedic, there's also uh, exams in many of the uh, giga, uh, the digital content at the end of every summary or every chapter, there's a short little practice exam there to help you understand what you just learned, okay? In addition to all this stuff, guys, you get exclusive access to the Facebook uh, group, you get access to me, okay? I try to do uh, some live training there whenever I can. Whenever members have uh, issues and struggles, I try to go ahead and, and create some live training, okay, to post there on the site. Um, and actually, if you get in now, guys, uh, this trial membership, I just posted uh, 
90, two 90 minute videos on EKG reading. Okay, one is about toxicology and how medications and stuff uh, affect how EKGs will appear. And another one is just on rates and rhythms. 90 minutes, guys, think about that on rate and rhythm only. Just think about how focused, okay, that presentation is going to be. The doctor that did it, I think, did a great uh, presentation on both of these topics. Um, and if you, again, you join the, as a Turbo Medic of the trial member, you'll get access to those videos along with all the other content that I've just mentioned. Again, I will put a link to that trial membership right in the notes here. You can go and check that out. If you're watching this on the blog, um, it's right below this video. All right, guys, that's it for me. Next week, we're going to tackle, believe it or not, what? Diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis, right? The DKA, the hyperglycemic patient. Okay, we're going to tackle that next week. Um, until then, guys, send me your minutes. If you have something of your own you want to go ahead and see here on the Monday Minutes, you can contact me. It's contact at emsofficehours.com. Don't forget to go to emsofficehours.com, guys. Look at the previous Monday Minutes. Okay, it goes way, way back to the well-being of the uh, paramedic, right? Um, and also, I've got other articles there, other blog posts, and, of course, the podcast right, the EMS Office Hours podcast, check that all out, guys, uh, go to iTunes, while you're there, leave me a review, leave some comments, I love to hear your comments, I love the feedback, I love to have engagement with you, the viewer, or you, the listener, if you if you listen to the podcast, all right, guys, again, that's it, um, any questions, the email's right there, contact at emsofficehours.com, until next time, as always, I'm Jim Hoffman for EMS Over Sours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe.